Okay, so again, para matandaan nyo kung ano yung convex, ano yung concave, ito yung, since yung edge nung lens magmimit sa dulo, so ito yung vex, no? convex, okay? So, concave, isipin nyo na lang yung, ano, yung, yung C dun sa last part, magpo-form ng cave. So, dito yung con, dito yung cave. Okay, dalawang C. Dalawang C ang concave. So, kita nyo na, uh, anyway, malilito rin kayo dun sa convex kasi dalawang C din. Pero, basically, tandaan nyo na lang yung convex, yan, magpo-form ng parang B para matandaan yung convex. Okay? So, di ba, yung light rays, it will uh, focus it to a certain point. Tapos, pabaliktad naman yung makikita natin sa microscope, uh, sa magnifying uh, glass. Umaylay. Uy. Diyo, Ben. Sa bagikang, Ben. Sa plot, si Pinipiri. Sa bagikang, Ben. Dose nga. Hindi ko maalim. Sorry, ha? Gulat ako. Anyway. Huwag oh, mute. Nakamute na ka na. <laughs> Do not unmute. unmute your... Hindi ko ma-mute lahat kasi I have to speak eh. Uh, sira yung microphone ng... Sira yung microphone kasi ng ano ko. So I have to... Sira, sira yung microphone ng laptop ko. So I have to use the... ng cellphone. Okay, anyway. cannot automatically mute all of you kasi madadami ako. Okay, sila uli. Nandiyan uli. So please mute yourselves. Automatic mute pagkapasok nyo ng meeting para hindi kaya tayo ma-distract. Ma Malalaman ko tuloy naman nanonood kayo ng movie habang may kaklase. Anyway, so yung uh, so back to yung concept na. No? So sa magnifying lens, nakikita, yung small area may kita natin in, through the lens in a mas larger. Same time yung uh, light, so sunlight, nagko-focus dun sa small point. So iinit yung small point. So, yan. Yung, yung kung saan nagko-converge yung light, you call that the focal point. And then the distance uh, from the focal point to the lens is called the focal length. So again, yung minention ni Diana, the human eye contains a lens that enables us to see images. Okay, so pinafocus natin yan into the retina. So this allows us to uh, see objects. No? So pag medyo malabo yung nakita nating object, nearsighted tayo, magsusot tayo ng contact lens or glasses to refocus the light para mas clear yung image. Ginagawa nila yung, yung iba, gumagawa na mga, ginagamit nila yung laser. Pero I don't recommend laser, no? May... Painful kasi may mga stories na painful yung pag, pag inano nila yung eye. Pero may ganang technique na instead of uh, using using uh, eyesight, uh, using glasses, gumagamit sila ng laser. Pero ang problema dyan ay uh, it can cause permanent damage pag mali yung pagkagawa. Okay, so gumamit na lang kayo ng eyeglasses. Okay.
Okay, so light is just one form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Uh, yung limit ng eyesight natin is the visible light, what can only be seen by uh, our eyes. So there are other forms of also uh, of electromagnetic radiation. You have also microwaves, you have radio waves. So uh, titingnan natin lahat, no? So different types of uh, electromagnetic radiation fall under electromagnetic spectrum. So this is defined by wavelength and frequency. So may aspects ng ibang electromagnetic radiation na pwede natin gamitin in uh, addition to the optical, in addition to light, to visible light. So pag-aaralan natin yan. So just to review, no, pag-aaralan nyo siguro to. So dito lang yung ano natin no yung visible light lang again nanometer siya no so pag sinabi mo 400 nanometers parang 400 bonds of uh yung between molecules no so yan yung length ng ng bond between molecules around around actually point one so around one thousand siguro so four hundred four thousand molecules to seven thousand molecules so yan yung uh yan yung uh, limit ng optical light so pag mas maliit pa sa four hundred nanometers or seven hundred nanometers eh, mahirap na makita kasi nag inaano mo na yung light eh hindi mo na ma, ma improve yung image Kasi hanggang doon lang yung limit ng light. So sa visible light, 400 nanometers, ito yung uh, blue end, uh, violet end. Tapos dito sa kabila, yun yung red end. So beyond the 700 nanometers, we have infrared. So ibig sabihin, mas, mat mas mataas kaysa 700 nanometers, that means the wavelength is longer. So, infrared, yan, ginagamit natin yan sa mga thermometers natin. Yung mga modern thermometers natin, yan yung may uh, gumagamit ng infrared radiation. Yung remote control din sa TV, yan, infrared din ang ginagamit yan. So, if you go beyond infrared, yung tinatarget na yung water molecules, no? yun yung microwaves. Okay? So, longer wavelength yan compared sa infrared. Longer wavelengths yan. And uh, yun yung nagkakos ng pag-iinit ng food natin. Tinatarget lang yung water molecules. No? So, hindi siya, uh, hindi nyo tinatarget yung mga proteins and other molecules. Tinatarget lang yung frequency ng water bonds para mag, uh, mag uh, move siya mag uh, mag uh, tawag dito parang spring siya no ginagalaw niya yung mga bonds ng water molecules para uminit okay and then you have radio waves yan mahaba nang mahaba yung wavelength on the other end you have the shorter wavelength so pagkatapos ng violet you have ultraviolet no so ultraviolet yan yung ginagamit uh, ng mga mga crime scene investigators no so for example may pinatay na tao tapos para mawala yung evidence nilinis niya yung ano nilinis niya lahat ng crime scene para walang trace ng blood ngayon itong ultraviolet uh, light tina-target niya yung kita pa rin niya yung mga organic molecules so kung may dugo diyan may kita pa rin niya yung remnants ng dugo so kaya pa niyang i-determine halimbawa kung nasaksak yung tao inano uh, inataw ng blunt object malalaman through the blood patterns ng dugo 
dun sa crime scene. So, gagamit sila ng ultraviolet light. At saka, nakikita rin yun yung fingerprints. And yung fingerprints mo, uh, this has um, uh, organic molecules as well. Okay? So, yun. Shorter wavelength. As you go, as the wavelength is shorter, the energy of the wave is higher. So, dangerous na yung mga higher uh, ultra- electromagnetic waves. Nakaka-cause na ng cancer. So, huwag tayo masyado magbilad sa araw. Ultraviolet uh, light. Although, most of them is blocked by the ozone, may nakaka-pass through pa rin. And then, beyond the ultraviolet, you have x-rays. So, ito yung dangerous pa rin siya. It has lots of energy. That's why we only have x-rays uh, three times a year. So, every three months at, uh, at the very at the most. Kasi it's dangerous to constantly expose yourself to x-rays. In fact, the person who discovered this, si William Ro- Rowentgen, uh, di ba, na, syempre kung ikaw ba naman ay gumamit ng x-ray tapos nakita mo nyo yung ilaw, eh, nakita nyo yung bones nyo, di ba, matutuwa kayo. Parang, uy, gusto ko ulitin yun, no? kita yung bones ko, no? Pero during that time, hindi nila alam na masama pala yung effect ng, ng x-rays na yan. So, eventually, namatay si, si Rowent Jen dyan sa, ano, dahil sa too much exposure, nagka-cancer ata siya, or basta nagka, namatay siya uh, due to a disease that's related to the work. <clears throat> so, yun, x-rays actually, so dangerous na yan. Mas higher energy. We still use that to ginamit natin yan to know the structure of DNA. No? X-ray crystallography. So gumamit tayo ng X-rays to study the structure of uh, DNA. And then you have gamma rays. So ito yung for sure, pag exposed ka dito, may taning na yung buhay mo. So once you are exposed to gamma rays, Nabawa, atomic bomb yan, tapos mataas yung ano ng gamma rays, for sure you will be, you will die in two to three years kasi mag, ano yan, you will cause cancer cells or basta magkakaroon yung mutation sa cells yan and it will lead to death eventually. So kaya yung mga nag-work sa nuclear reactors, mataas yung gamma radiation dyan kasi yung nuclear waste, it has gamma rays as well. So, kaya full, ano sila, protected gear. Pero, pag ano yan, katulad nangyari, nangyari sa Japan, nasira yung Fukushima plant, kailangan nilang pumunta mismo dun sa reactor na mataas yung gamma radiation. Nag-volunteer yung mga matatanda kasi, kasi pag pumasok ka dun, for sure na mamatay ka. So, mga nag-volunteer dun para maayos yung nuclear reactor sa Japan nung nagka-earthquake nasira yung nuclear reactor para maayos nag, nag-volunteer yung mga matatanda kasi alam nila yung mamatay na within three years you you just die so nag-sacrifice sila yung uh, sa fictional stories no about about Incredible Hulk ito yung gamma rays ito yung nag-change nung scientist to Incredible Hulk pero sa totoong buhay mamatay kapag exposed ka sa gamma rays Okay, so that's higher energy. What more pa cosmic radiation? So for sure, uh, cosmic radiation, this will lead to mutation pa rin and death. Okay, kasi higher energy tight siya. Okay, so yan yung mga different electromagnetic spectrum. Only a small portion is uh, visible light. Sorry, saan ba tayo? Okay, whereas a wavelength represents the distance between the adjacent peaks of a light wave. Okay, so yung wave mo, yung distance, yung wavelength, no? May, may ano rin to, uh, may kinalaman din as uh, explained, may kinalaman din yung wavelength sa frequency. So, mas ma, maliit yung wavelength, 
mas maraming uh, waves within a span of time. So, tumataas yung frequency nun. So, this represents the, the rate of oscillation. So, taas baba na mabilis. So, the waves with higher frequency have shorter wavelengths and therefore have more oscillations per unit time than lower frequency waves. Okay. Again, each color corresponds to a particular frequency and wavelength. So in white light, magkahalo yan mga different colors of the rainbow. So in lowest frequency is red, highest uh, frequency is violet. So when the retina receives visible light of many different frequencies, we, uh, we uh, perceive this as white light, okay? So nalaman, ginamit nga ni Isaac Newton, yung prism, prism para ma-break down yung white light. Okay. So connected dito yung sa electromagnetic radiation, yung mga ibang properties ng light, you have fluorescent dyes. So if you notice, so if you notice yung mga pag-highlight marker, no, magsulat ka sa highlight marker, tapos mag-ano ka ng ultraviolet light dyan sa, sa, sa marker na yung pang-highlight. Nag-fluorescent siya, no? so fluorescent yung dye na yan. So that means yung mismong molecules niya nag emit ng energy no so nagiging source of light mismo yung yung molecules so they absorb ultraviolet or blue light and use that energy to emit photons so hindi lang sila nag-absorb nag emit siya mismo so malaking bagay yun sa pag-aaralan sa microscopy so in in some materials the photons may be emitted emitted following a delay after absorption so tawag diyan ay phosphorescence. So ito yung example ng paggamit ng fluorescent dyes. Kasi in reality, kung gagamit tayo ng optical microscope, nabawa magkakat tayo ng onions, gusto na natin makita yung cells, uh, parang transparent kasi makita natin. No? Kaya tayo gagamit ng mga dyes or meron mga certain microscopic uh, technology that allows us to see this uh, difference in colors because of the fluorescent dyes. So, dyan tayo papasok sa microscopy, no? So, when we say, when we want to see the microscopic world, we have to increase the magnification. So, it's the ability of uh, a lens to enlarge the image of an object when compared to the real object. So, that means 10 times means the image appears 10 times the size of the object as viewed with the naked eye. Okay, so indeed, uh, we're, we're not just limited by magnification. No? So we, we can actually magnify something, pero if the images are not clear, then it makes no sense. It, we cannot see, we cannot distinguish. So it improves our ability to see details, but it is not sufficient alone. So we need to have a higher resolution. So this is the ability to, to tell the two separate points or objects are separate. Okay? So we need to contrast, increase the contrast to detect different structures in a specimen. So various types of microscopes, use different features of light or electrons to increase the contrast, uh, visible difference between the parts of a specimen. Okay. Okay. So, balik tayo sa, sa history ng microscopes. No? So, si Anton uh, Van Leeuwenhoek, actually, may mga lenses before him. Pero ito yung first na ginamit to study microorg microorganisms which he called uh, animal kills, no? So he was the first one to use a microscope to look at the uh, microorganisms. 
Okay, although merong iba na nag-magnify, gumamit ng lenses to magnify objects. And then other scientists as well, you have uh, Galileo who helped improve the microscope para mas maganda yung resolution. Okay, yun nga yung sinabing first one who discovered, uh, who created the first microscope, si, uh, si Hansen Zacharias uh, Janssen. Pero hindi nila tinado yan in terms of yung microscopic world. Okay, so we will study uh, different te techniques of uh, different uh, microscopes. So itong light microscope mismo, maraming klase na nandiyan. No? Yung, uh, the one you will use in the lab laboratory is the bright field, bright field microscope. So you have a compound uh, microscope, meaning you have two or more lenses. So you can do it with a uh, single piece, eyepiece, eye we call that monocular, or binocular when you have two pieces. So mas madaling tingnan yung uh, object if you're uh, using uh, your, uh, your, you, using two eyepieces. So meron kang lens dito mismo, we call that the, the ocular lens. So usually it uh, magnifies object 10 times. Tapos pagdating dito sa so nose, uh, nose piece, meron kang mga objective lens na pwede mong palitan. So pwede mong palitan yung magnification. Depende kung anong gusto mong tingnan. So at the other end of the uh, body tube are a set of objective lens on a rotating nose piece, the magnification of these uh, objective lenses are ranges from four times to 100 times. So pag multiply mo yung 10 times dito, tapos dito sa four times or 100 times, magiging, ito magiging 40 times, ito magiging 1,000 times. So usually, yan yung limit ng mic, yung ano, bright field, no? 1,000 times uh, magnification. Kasi mahirap na ma Ma, ma, makita yung details ng object with, a, with high resolution kasi nga nag-aano na yung light eh. so again multiply nyo yung nasa eyepiece nyo the ocular ocular magnification ano pa magjo-join So, multiply mo yung ocular magnification uh, times yung objective mag magnification and then sa objective lens, you will have the total magnification of the object. Okay. So, uh, yun yung bright field. Yun yung bright field microscope na gagamitin niyo sa laboratory. Ah, uh, kamusta naman anong ginagawa niyo sa laboratory? Nag uh, identification quiz po kami last uh, last session po. Uh, gumagamit na kayo ng microscopes. Uh, parang demonstration po and uh, learning about different parts pero wala po pong practical na tinitignan po namin yung mga specimens. And, or, pero nag-handle na kayo nag-handle na kayo ng microscope? Yes po. Okay. Sige. So that's the first part. Sino, sino pala yung prof niya sa lab? Si Ma'am Alba po. Uh, anong book ginagamit niyo? Um, give me a second. Sigit lang po. Kasi yung inano sa akin, yung kay Bart, Bartolome yung sinabi na nirequire eh. So I don't know if you're using hey, the same. Kay Bartolome, sir. Kay Bartolome and Kiles ba to? Ah, uh, so may copy na kayo? Yes. Well, ako. <laughs> ako, ah, okay. meron. Yes po. Okay, sige. That's good. Oh. Okay, so yun, at least may book na kayo, meron na kayong bright field uh, microscope. Okay, 
Ito naman dark field. Uh, block mo yung ilaw from the so- light light source. So you have an opaque disk. So wala kang illuminator. Okay. So ang mangyayari diyan, hindi syempre hindi yung bright yung background magiging dark dark yung background. Hence the term dark, dark field. Okay? So it blocks most of the light from the illuminator. So the only light that reaches the objective is the one that's refracted or reflected by structures in the specimen. So yun yung uh, this the result the resulting image typically shows bright objects in the background. Okay, so maganda to gamitin sa mga live specimen. Okay, so you have high contrast, high resolution images of specimen without the use of stains. So yan yung uh, may kita nyo sa dark, dark field microscopes. So pag uh, live specimen may kita yan under uh, the microscope. Okay, so without the use of dyes, no, we can use the principles of refraction and interference to, to see the specimen. Uh, ang problem lang dito, mahal lang yung microscope. No? So, hindi, hindi pwedeng gamitin sa lab. So, this microscope creates an image by altering wavelengths of light rays passing through the specimen. Okay, and very helpful to sa live specimen. So, without killing the specimen, you can see the cells, organelles of eukaryotic cells, and the endospores in prokaryotic cells. So, maganda yung face contrast microscopes, but uh, limited tayo dyan kasi mahal. So, tila natin yung, ito yung sa bright field, no? So, kita natin dito sa face contrast uh, microscope, you can see that uh, they appear to glow. So, kita natin yung, yung resolution. You have more detail if you use uh, face contrast uh, microscopes. Another related uh, microscope is the differential interference contrast or DIC microscope. So they're similar to face contrast microscopes in that they use interference patterns, patterns to enhance the contrast between different features of a specimen. Okay, so ang, ang uh, gamit dito, you have two beams of light. So, uh, remember what we learned in uh, biochemistry, no? may, may polariz- pol- uh, ordinary white light has different planes of uh, polarization dyan, no? So, if you pass it through a enantiomeric enunci- uh, solution, you can have one polarization lang. So, yan, if you sort of purify the polarization of light, you can use two uh, types, two beams of light of different uh, polarization and allow it to pass through the specimen. So this will create interference patterns. So yun yung mag-create ng uh, contrast and resolution. So yan, without the use of stains, you can see the, the details of this uh, fungus. Okay, so another type of microscope, again, we are going to use the structures, so molecular structures within the molecules na pag, uh, pag tinamaan mo ng ultraviolet light, it will emit photons as well. So nag fluoresce siya, no? Um, again, uh, these are called chromophores or in particular uh, fluorochromes. Kasi kapag um, pag tinamaan siya, mag-emit siya ng energy mismo yung molecule na yun. Mag-emit siya ng photon. So they're cap- capable of absorbing energy from a light source. Uh, pwedeng beyond the visible light, ultraviolet, and then emit this energy as visible light. No? 
So, example dyan, yung sa mga dahon, you have chlorophyll, which is naturally, you have chlorochromes there. So, you can also add uh, fluorescent stains that are added to the specimen to create contrast. Okay? So, yun nga, shorter yung wavelength. Ultraviolet light is shorter than visible light. So, pag tinamaan mo yung organic molecules na may chromophores, so, they absorb this. So, usually, mga double bands yan, no? Sa, sa mga, mga aromatic substances. So, yung mga double bands between carbons or triple bands na tatamaan and this allows they absorb the light and then emit the visible light with longer wavelengths. Okay? So, pinifilter out na lang yung pinifilter out na lang yung uh, uh, ultraviolet light kasi harmful nga sa eyes. So, eventually, what you see is uh, uh, you have bright colors against a dark background. Okay, so it's especially helpful in clinical uh, microbiology. They can be used to identify pathogens, uh, to find particular species within an environment, or to find the locations of particular molecules and structures within the cell. Okay, so yan, in details na makita sa fluorescent microscope. Again, ang problema dito, mahal siya masyado. It, pinag, ginagamit ng mga fluorescent microscopes, especially sa, sa study ng uh, immune system, immunology. No? So we have this technique called immunofluorescence. Uh, fluorescence. So you have two types. You have DFA, which is direct immunofluorescence assay. And you have indirect immunofluorescence assay, IFA. So anong difference nila? Um, yung... Yung sa DFA, you have the antibodies that are stained with the fluorochrome, okay? So when you have a particular pathogen, it will trigger your immune system. So it will cause the antibodies to target the pathogens. So because of these uh, antibodies, makakaroon na you will be able to... Uh, find the target pathogen. No? So mag-bind kasi antibodies dun sa pathogen because of the antibodies that you stained with the fluorochrome. Okay? So this is the FA. So primary antibody stain because you're using the primary antibodies to bind with the pathogen. So will you, you will be able to identify the pathogen kasi specific yung antibody dun sa pathogen. Another type so, hindi siya kumakabit mismo sa pathogen. These secondary antibodies, they bind to the primary antibodies. No? So, so, it works in the same principle kasi nga uh, very specific sila sa antibodies and therefore, the antibodies, the primary antibodies is specific as well to the pathogen you will be able to identify. Okay? So, yun. Secondary antibodies do not attach directly to the pathogen, but they do bind to the primary antibodies. Okay, so when the unstained primary antibodies bind to the pathogen, the fluorescent secondary antibodies can be observed binding to the primary antibodies. So, yun yung principle ng uh, IFA. So it increases the number of uh, fluorescent antibodies attached to a specimen. Okay? So kita nyo, very contrasting ang paggamit nitong mga uh, fluorescent microscope. Okay, we'll start with the new uh, zoom. Okay, I'll end it here.